Hello and welcome to the 21st event in the Public Thought Leadership event series hosted by the Library. Western Sydney University was placed first in the world three years running from 2022 to 2024 in the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings, the only global measurement of uh, performance against UN Sustainable Development Goals. And the event series aims to celebrate and promote this number one ranking, complementing work being undertaken across the university as part of its sustainability and decadal strategy. I'll now hand over to my colleague, Badra Chandran, to introduce today's speaker. Thanks, Emma. Good afternoon, everybody. Western Sydney University Library extends a warm welcome to the Thought Leadership event series number 21. We are privileged to introduce Professor Richard Yan as our distinguished speaker today, focusing on manufacturing and recycling for a circular economy. Professor Yan joined the School of Computing, Engineering and Mathematics in January 2012 as an Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Smart Structures. In 2018, he was promoted to the rank of Professor. Before his tenure at Western Sydney University, Professor Yang served as a Senior Lecturer in Mechanical Engineering at Deakin University's School of Engineering. His extensive academic journey also includes postdoctoral research fellowships at the University of Sydney and the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, following the completion of his PhD in Mechanical Engineering at the University of Hong Kong in 2002. Professor Yang's research expertise lies in computational mechanics with over 25 years of experience in areas such as advanced manufacturing, industry 4.0, metal forming, metal surface treatment, material properties, and mechanical behaviors. His work extensively involves numerical modeling and simulations, including multi-scale modeling of advanced engineering materials and structures, structural health monitoring, and smart structures. Please join us to explore how innovative recycling practices in manufacturing can foster a sustainable circular economy guided by the insights and expertise of Professor Yang. Welcome, Professor Yang. Thank you very much uh, for Emma and uh, Bandra's very nice uh, introduction. Um, it's really my great uh, honor to be here to give this uh, presentation about our research, about the manufacturing and the recycling uh, for a circular economy. Um, so I, I have a slide about me, but uh, I think uh, already uh, Bandra already introduced me very well. Thank you for that. And uh, just mentioned, I'm the uh, founding director of the Center for Advanced Manufacturing Technology and uh, from the School of Engineering Design Building Environment, Western Sydney University. And uh, about the center, so we are all thrilled about uh, our success in this uh, Times uh, Higher Education Impact Ranking. Again, we won. So I'm also, I'm very proud of uh, being part of our center. We have greatly contributed to this success as well. So today's, I will have talk about our project is one of the contributions. And we have a um, Professor Sarah Zhao as the co-director and also deputy director, uh, Professor Wu Fan, and with the 15 uh, full academic staff as the core members and also associated with other schools, business and school, uh, school of science, and the, as the associate, uh, associate members as well. So we have four A research streams in the center. So advanced manufacturing technologies, computer aided engineering, digital twin, a business model as the first uh, um, A. And the second A is about advanced engineering materials and defense technology. And the third one is the automation and the robotics. And the last one is advanced manufacturing education training. So we are actually, we want to 
uh, provide the support and the trainings education to the next generation always. And uh, research strengths from the center. So I just uh, probably focus on two. One is on the advanced manufacturing. The other one, next slide, so focus on advanced engineering materials. So in the advanced manufacturing, we are pretty good on the advanced uh, digital modeling and simulation. So that's including the materials and the material processing and also product. And uh, the advanced engineering materials uh, is also focused on those uh, polymers, composites, nano composites, and the steels and the light, light metals, including the titanium and aluminium and the other materials. And the advanced manufacturing technology side, we focus on the, the core of the advanced manufacturing technology, additive manufacturing, and also termed as 3D printing. And advanced robotic technology, automation, control, and the design of mechanical, mechatronic product and system, rapid prototyping, manufacturing and testing, this all a strong area. And for advanced engineering materials, it's not only focused on the mechanical, mechatronic, actually we are across the disciplines and go to construction and civil as, as well. So looking to the green construction and the building materials and also high performance uh, fiber reinforced uh, cement t-shirts uh, composites and also their advanced manufacturing technologies like a 3D concrete print, uh, printing. And the polymer materials as another focus uh, under this uh, uh, stream, the so adhesive material hold, coating and the flammability and the combustibility and the compensates for those laminates, sandwiches, and the particle and the short fiber reinforced composite. So all these uh, materials are for solar, hydrogen, nano composite, nano materials, and nano structures. So structured materials. And the others, we also look into the material separation and the recovery. So that's it within the, uh, the circular economy and also the recycling of material, reuse, recycling, or repurposing. So we are strongly supported by the hardware. So we are now, we are standing, I'm standing in this building, a building that, so just near, next door, we have the advanced manufacturing printing. We used 10 years to build up this AMP and with all these advanced manufacturing equipment and facilities. We also, over the years, uh, greatly supported by the Western Sydney Launchpad Program team, and we work together to solve the problem and from real world and from the uh, local industry partners. And uh, we also take advantage of these uh, uh, geographic uh, locations and uh, with this uh, advanced manufacturing uh, framework and uh, considering the great support from the state government and also from the federal government. And they want to make uh, Western Sydney as the center for advanced manufacturing. So we developed this uh, location, Paris, Kingswood, as the advanced manufacturing printing. And we developed Parmata City Campus and the Parmata Engineer Innovation Hub PEIH as a showcase demonstration a joint lab. So that we do have the fifth floor as the demonstration lab uh, for industry 4.0 and advanced manufacturing smart factory. And in level seven, we also have the micro uh, factory to show the all the advanced manufacturing concept and the technologies. And in Backstown, we built up the factory of the future and uh, gave another demonstration and showcase uh, a workshop to the local industry in the manufacturing sector. So we make Parmata Buxton, Paris, like an innovation channel in advanced manufacturing. So, and uh, just to highlight what we have for the additive manufacturing, uh, 3D printing, just uh, in this uh, advanced manufacturing 
technologies. So first of all, it is about the metal. So we have a two um, very expensive equipment and a very high precision equipment. The one is the uh, the from the three D systems. So we can make a two hundred fifty by two hundred fifty by three hundred new titanium stainless steel uh, other alloys available. And we also have a desktop metal X from Mark Ford, and we can do the metal FFF. So that means uh, um, fuse the filament fabrication technology. So that's make a uh, very much uh, diverse of the products. So stainless steel, copper, uh, two steels, and other alloys. So very uh, diverse. And the build uh, volume rate is uh, pretty big too, 300 by 220 and 180. So we have a specific focus on the plastics and the composite, including recycled plastics here. So you can see the older technologies um, and the 3D printers I listed here. So we can do the older single polymer materials, so PLA, AABS, TPC, RTPE, nylon, PTG, all these uh, popular um, material and those materials they also under the code for the recycle material and we also can do the a glass fiber carbon fiber composite printing and we can do a chopped this is short carbon fiber or continuous carbon fiber printing and among those machines I would like to uh, pick up uh, uh, the big wrap pro is a large scale 3d printing and we can do the uh, composite printing and with the volume is a uh, one cubic meter. And specifically, another one I would like to pick up is the uh, in the right black right corner. So you can see the pallets and filament 3D printer and the Gigabot X. So that is especially for the recycled uh, plastic research for us. It's from V3D. It's one of our industrial partners. And for the center's performance, it's pretty good from 2021 and to 2018. So we attracted, secured, and about more than 15 million um, in the income, research income, including the 13 ARC grants and the two generation defense fund, and also two C CSIRO National Science Convergence Accelerator program fund, focused on the recycled plastic and the Composite. So that's what currently we do. We also have other uh, industrial uh, funded project and from Smart Concrete CRC and the Tech Voucher Innovation Connection and the other funded resources over the years. So security funding until 2020. And that's why I said put this logo again. So it's the number one again and in the Times uh, Higher Education impact ranking. Uh, give a showcase uh, research on the advanced manufacturing before I touch the manufacturing and the recycling for circular economy. And so this is the one project we work with the L and A pressure uh, limited PTY limit. So they are welding company, they do the a lot of the high pressure uh, vessel. So we work together funded by the Tech Vulture scheme uh, in 2018. So it's industry project and uh, assisting them to finish the design of the skilled uh, heat exchanger prototype and develop testing with, with industry 4.0 t-shirt. So we did a CAD, FEA, CFD of heat exchanger and use uh, advanced sensor technology. We can conduct the remote machine condition monitoring. So we also provide the research training for master's students and uh, uh, for their project and the in industry experience. So that is under SDG 9.11.4, so covered industry in innovation and the infrastructure and also sustainable city and the communities and the four is the ecology education. So now we talk about the manufacturing and the recycling for a circular economy. So circular economy is a concept and how well 
developed that and established over the years. Um, so this is the some uh, figures from the uh, the publications. So we talk about this uh, circular economy. It's really want to follow the product or materials uh, life cycle um, management. So it's from the raw material to the end product until the the circle we make it is circle closed. So we hope the material can can be in the loop always, and it's not just uh, get this material to so go to the uh, environment and go to the water, oceans, and become the the waste. So that's what we're talking about. So when you look at uh, the really the volume is a huge amount of the uh, waste actually we discard every day. So for example, and while we talk about the traditional manufacturing, and we always talk about the CNC machining, so it's a computer numerical controlled process. And we start with the bigger bulk material, and then we do the machining. Usually, after a lot of remove the material, and only a very small parts hold it in the hands. So the most the majority of the materials actually wasted. We never use them and they go back to do the a life cycle again. So that's the problem. Then so how could we improve the, uh, you know, the use rate of the, uh, the waste? And that's always the uh, things we consider. So if we could make an economical uh, economy system, like we have a downstream, can always use the upstream industries uh, outcome or waste, and then repeat this project process and make it uh, in a circular way. So that would be terrific. That's all target. And uh, for plastic waste, that's really a, a big issue. It's not only for Australia. It's really for the whole uh, the world. And we have, a, so here some uh, data we say that 8 point billion uh, metric tons of plastic produced since 1950. And but unfortunately, only nine percent um, have been uh, kind of recycled, reused. So the rest of the part go to the river, go to the water, go go back to the environment, allow them to uh, degrade by themselves. But most of them have very slow degradation process, and that's remade and become the pollution, and that is biggest threat for the our health. Okay, so if we talk about the other countries, average is 9% recycl recycling rate. But how about Australia? According to the statistic data from the Australian Institute, uh, according to the report from the Saros, and they all mentioned it's just 14% got um, recycled <coughs> for the party way. We are the advanced country. Australia is one of the most advanced countries, but we only have a, a how many five percent right higher than the average. So that means we did really less. So the government noticed that. So published the National Waste uh, Policy Act Action Plan uh, in 2019, and also did um, an access in 2020, and talk about how could we improve this uh, waste. Um, reuse so especially for the plastic so we want to achieve uh an 18 80 percent average recovery rate from all waste stream by 2013 only five years six years to go so how could we achieve that and a lot of uh, the actions are uh, and the uh, undertaken uh, but uh, it's still it's a big job to achieve so so many different uh, polymer materials, thermal set, plastics, uh, thermal uh, plastics uh, we use every day. Because this material is cheap and also is very economical, it's cost effective, so the people really love these materials. So when you look at uh, whatever we take the, the actions from government, from the personal individuals, but these usage of the plastic is going up year by year, even right now. So 
what do we can do? We cannot stop people to use them. And because of the advantage of the plastic materials. So we have to think about how could we reuse, repurpose, and redo the materials and avoid influence to the impact, generate the larger impact into the environment and the, to the human body as well. So you can see those, uh, uh, that's the seven um, codes and for the plastic recycling and the PET, HDPE, PVC, LDPE, PP, and also PS, that's the six uh, plastic materials that uh, currently is really as the focus uh, from the uh, government and the, from the um, the recycle or concern the concerning uh, organizations. So those uh, materials are under those uh, uh, classification and also have other plastics. So it doesn't mean those uh, other plastics uh, they are not important and they are also greatly contribute to this uh, um, the the wider pollution. So what's the solution for that? So how could we make those plastic waste that can be recycled, reused? And uh, probably we look into those uh, uh, new technology. It's not a traditional technology. There is no solution. So, so we look into the 3D printing, additive manufacturing. So that's what uh, uh, we introduced here. So you can try the 3D printing is different from the traditional manufacturing as the CNC manufacturing. So start from raw material and do the material removal. This process is different than the opposite. So it is really come how many materials we use, we put those materials. So that's really a sustainable process at the nature. So also this process is much easier. So neither uh, the designer to create the CAD modeling. So use the computer, use software to create the model and use this model save as the STL file and then put into the uh, the software, do the slicing. And this slicing is basically layer by layer. So for example, if we have this uh, cup and we do this uh, slicing, it's from this is termite set direction, so layer by layer, we finish off. So actual printing will do the opposite. So do the layer from the bottom first and then finish the bottom up process and finish the whole printing. So it's also iterative uh, process. We want to get the alt optimization of the process. We want to get to the high quality products. So that's what the researcher are uh, coming from. And the AM process, additive manufacturing process also have uh, seven different uh, types and uh, I give it here is uh, um, it's a lot of different uh, um, technology used so notice here we really look at uh, uh, the direct energy deposition uh, material uh, extrusion and those uh, process so for our research we really focus on the material extrusion so material extrusion and uh, basically have a two popular uh, technologies at the moment. So one is the, uh, we termed as the FFF, triple F, that's the field development fabrication. So you can see this one, we need to make the materials as the filament. So it basically is uh, just like a wire. So these are wire fit materials, uh, we need the whole process to make them. So here I also in the left hand side, you can find that's the process uh, to do the uh, plastic waste, uh, reuse them to do the 3D printing. So you can see we do the separation and then we do the uh, scrap grinder and do the cleaning and the drying and then we develop the composition and do the filament extrusion. And after that, we put that one into the, uh, this uh, 3D printer to do the printing. So that's the FDM. Uh, or we say the FF process. So such a process you will see um, this uh, uh, particle waste uh, and do the whole process will experience uh, at least uh, one or two more uh, heat uh, cycle. So that is a bit of uh, waste. So the reason why, because the research found and the six uh, 
a heat cycle would be the limit for such a uh, particle waste material. Otherwise, the degradation of the material uh, will be uh, severe. So we have to consider these. So um, in a different way, so we have the, in the right hand side is a, a particle, fused particle or fused granular fabrication FGF process. So in this process, we don't use the phantom and we use a pellet. So basically you can see in the right hand side, so the waste material uh, experienced the collection, cleaning, washing, and the granulation. So we can use the machine to do the uh, crushing them into the small pieces of flakes or pellets. And then we can directly use uh, uh, this uh, uh, FGF process to do the printing. So there's uh, this part, like the polarization and the filament extrusion, it just uh, totally we just uh, get rid of. So we say one, at least one is cycled. So that's what we do for the 3D printing of uh, recycled solar particle. Use this uh, fused uh, granular fabrication technology. So that's the machine we use here. So we well, focus on this uh, uh, fused granular fabrication technology. So you can see we start from the pellets, uh, flakes, uh, granules, and uh, other types of the materials. And uh, in the research, we could do the recycled PET, recycled PETG, PLA, or PC, HDPE. And uh, then we put it into this uh, um, machine. So this uh, printer is from re 3 d the Gigabot X. So put the material on top of the hopper, and then we can finish the printing. So the printing is same as the uh, the filament, uh, the extrusion way. So pretty much you can see these uh, figures show the samples we are uh, printed out. And in the button, we also gave the some showcase uh, examples. So we do the testing, we do the simulation. So overall, we look into the material performance and check how could we provide the high quality uh, printing out at the end. So this uh, uh, the project is uh, uh, probably supported by the uh, CERO and also National Science Foundation from USA. So that's uh, what we started in the, as the one of the convergence accelerator uh, program in 2022. And uh, we have successfully finished the phase one and got founded uh, in 2023 and into phase two now. So start from creating the impact from the local plastic waste that used to upgrade uh, contaminized 3D using uh, fused granular fabrication printer and practice the basic learning. So that's we not only for develop this uh, this uh, technology itself, but also provide support for the local industries in USA. And then in the second part, so we recreate and the transport of plastic waste and through the community-led manufacturing. So that's all under the same team. So we have a Ray 3D, so that's the um, the FGF printer supplies and as the lead organization and work with the University of Texas at Austin and work with the uh, industry partners from Habitat uh, for Humanity Restore and at Austin as well. And also we have another uh, university from Australia, University of Wollongong to join us. And so all team is ready to develop the design, test the model optimization strategy for the fused granular fabrication technology for recycled polymers in phase one. And now we are in phase two for composites. We specific uh, emphasize on the use of sustainable and locally derived sources. So that's the whole project scope. So in the phase one, we have five members in this project. So myself and uh, Dr. Tosin Amakinwa as another CI. So we lead this team and we have uh, Dr. Georgie Panta as a research fellow. And also we have a uh, PhD student, uh, Dr. Fan Nguyen. And we also have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Brandon Beach, 
as the one of the research assistant, he also he was my final year project student as well. So we still focus on those uh, uh, three SDGs, so industry innovation and the infrastructure, and uh, also the number 11, sustainable cities and the communities. And number four is for quality education. And uh, the aim for this uh, project, so really look into how could we implement the experimental and the numerical analysis and the design uh, framework on the FGF printed recycled thermoplastics for establishing a material database for such wastes. So this is for phase one. So phase two, I don't, don't focus today. And the objectives, we conduct standard uh, testing for samples. We look at uh, all these uh, FGF printed uh, samples, their uh, performance, uh, their uh, characterization, and we want to find out how could we set this FGF printing process to get the best uh, products. And we conduct a final element analysis based modeling and for such samples uh, <clears throat> using the software and to find out how could we design the materials in the better shape. And uh, we conduct a parametric study and to correlate uh, a uh, key FE, FGF printing parameters and establish the material database for those materials of our interest. So that's a material including the PET, PETG, PCPLA, HDPE. So that's what we uh, look at in the phase one. So this uh, whole process uh, we developed over the years. So use uh, all the technologies, advanced technologies in 3D printing, uh, in the structural, um, microstructural analysis. So you can find that that's uh, analytical modeling and also FEA, finite element uh, modeling for the samples at multi-scale modeling sense. So we do the full model and REE model and then design for additive manufacturing and the product design. So those concepts are also included. So at the end, the outcome is the material database for the such of four materials. So PT, PTG, PC, and PLA. So the sample white, so we develop this sample according to the ASTM standard. So this virus standard, uh, this, uh, the sample is designed and according to the uh, capacity of the material testing machine available in our um, the art lab. And also notice here, so when we look at uh, this sample, it's quite different from uh, the traditionally made sample. For example, use mode injection, uh, use the machining, uh, CNC machining. So this uh, 3D printing, and we always start with the, uh, the edge of the sample. So that's why we have a contour. So we term that one like contour. And then we put the infill inside. So that's a needle part. So they have a different patterns. Uh, they could have different rustle angle. They have a considering the raster uh, width and that's linked with the nozzle. So the nozzle basically drops the materials and continuously and to finish the whole process. So it's a layer by layer process. So when they finish one layer, they just do in this exact direction they finish the whole thing. And this, so that's why we look into the, all the parameters here. So for the printing uh, parameters, we look into the layer thickness and the infill density, number of the contours, uh, rustle angles, uh, printing speed, nozzle diameter, and even bed temperature. So the bed temperature is just the build uh, plate temperature. And we also look at the different levels and a different uh, uh, layer thickness, so three levels, so 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and the infill density we look at 40, 70, 100%. And the number of the contours, so that's the age, so that's layers, so that's one, two, three. So the Russell angle, we didn't make it, uh, changes, it's just a positive negative 45 degrees. And the printing speed, pretty much very fast. So that's a one point, it's 1.8 meter per minute, very fast. 
and uh, use the same uh, settings for the nozzle uh, diameter and also temperature. So we're printing the samples. And uh, as I mentioned, we did a final element model for both full model and the RVE model. So this is a full model in the complex. So you can see that's a three layers model. And uh, it's a cross section. You can see how that's what we developed the model to make the full model available. And then we do the testing. And uh, you can see that the printed uh, the structures, uh, structure the samples. And that's it for on the top is for PC polycarbonate and for button that's it all for the uh, PETG, so the white color. So for the RVE model, so the full model and uh, it's uh, lengthy and uh, difficult to create and do the simulation also uh, will be able, not able to capture the, the detailed retrospectures. So that's what we did, uh, microstructural analysis, use uh, SEM analysis. And then we find we found the, the, the gaps between the contours, uh, the air voids between the infills. So and then we created a representative volume element model, so that's the RVE model. And uh, for different cases, different infill, so that's is, uh, uh, 40%, that's 100%, that's 70%. So different, uh, uh, for, sorry, 40, 70, 100%. So different uh, uh, cases, we have a different uh, uh, model weights. So after that, we also do the uh, analysis. So SEM analysis, just look into all the samples. So are they a good? And uh, according to this SEM in the left-hand side, that is the A and the C, that's about the PET, right hand side B and D, that's it for the uh, PETG. So when you look at the result, the material is pretty good. So that means the recycled material doesn't mean the material is bad. They are good, right? And we did a PIR analysis, look at the structure changes, and uh, look at this uh, comparison, RPET, RPET, 3D printed, RPETG, RPET. G 3D printed, you can see all these materials have very similar uh, performance. There's no significant change made by 3D printing. So we are happy with that. And uh, also thermal stability of the um, FGF uh, printed RPET and RPETG. And here we do have the, uh, the change, but overall it is still good. So that means after this uh, technology, 3D printing, the process, the first one, is no much change. So this is still good news, right? Always that's over the material characterization. And then we do the testing. We look at how strong they are. So that's the tensile testing. So basically tensile testing is just fix one end and drag, stretch the other end. And we repeat the process and test all the samples and find out the tensile strength. So tensile strength and it's the one of the main uh, parameters for the uh, polymers. So RPET in the left hand side, RPETG in the right hand side. So these two materials, um, conventionally RPETG is stronger than the PET. And in these cases also, you can see these results is a little bit higher than the RPET, so still. And they repeat the whole thing, and we can find that uh, if we put 100% in field and RPET and show the very strong, almost double the value from RPET. And so that's what we uh, we compared. And also you can see the contour actually influenced the, uh, the tensile strength uh, significantly for the RPET. Uh, but for RPETG, it's not like that. Uh, uh, big when we increase the number of the contour. But one or two, from one to two, they significantly change the um, the values. So that means the skin, the thickness uh, or the number of the um, the contours is really important. And here we show the some effects of the printing parameters on tensile strength. 
on the such samples, and you can see, and in the left hand side that's a PET, in the right hand side PETG. So they have a different performance, and according to the sensitivities analysis, so layer thickness in field density is not really influenced much on the PET, and for a contour numbers is not influenced much, and for the tensile strength for the uh, PET. Uh, G. So they are different. So that's to show the difference between the two materials. And we compared uh, those uh, results. We saw uh, numerical modeling. And here you can see all these uh, uh, in the middle, that's a blue line. That's it from the experimental work. And we make uh, other results is from numerical modeling. And we really make uh, uh, the two upper and the lower bounds and for this uh, uh, analysis and then right away cover this is fundamental work so that means all numerical work and can be used further uh, to predict the material properties and performance and uh, after that so we have created this uh, uh, material database so we also and did this it's a long one so link with all the sightings for the FGF so it's just partial. So that's what the parameters and what's the uh, number of levels, level one, two, three, and what's the uh, setting we should be. So that's what we uh, created. And you will ask, uh, oh, this one looks the same as what <coughs> I showed before. Yeah, because we did a lot of practice, repeated work, and to find out this one is working. Other settings are not really um, uh, working well. And uh, give a little bit of conclu concluding uh, remarks. So this work is still ongoing. So it's just uh, uh, put uh, uh, some uh, uh, information about the yeah, uh, RPT and RPTG. So basically we have uh, RPT and RPTG. Uh, they have a different performance and uh, considering the layer thickness uh, uh, in field density, and also considering the number of the contour. And uh, the multi-scale modeling approach is really effectively establish the upper and the lower bounds of the tensile stress for both uh, samples. And it really uh, help us understand uh, the, what's the most of the experimental data within the defined range. And the fracture surface uh, characteristics of both uh, materials as a bit typical uh, brittle fracture behaviors, but also show the good qualities and can we can achieve uh, using um, fused granular fabrication 3D printing technology. So we publish a paper uh, in the polymer testing and in this year as the one of the outcomes for our research for this project. So we will uh, have other uh, results published for the uh, PC or PLA for those materials. And we also have a, a lot of uh, uh, good results for those materials. But considering time today, I only focus on the RPET and the RPTG. So that's about this. And we also have a, a, did a lot of uh, uh, printing. So that's all the showcase. And uh, uh, it's all just in the next door in the advanced manufacturing printing, and uh, that's all the FGF printed products used to uh, recycle the plastic. So this uh, uh, white one, that's a PETG, that blue one, that's a PET, others it's a used uh, PC, so polycarbonate. So we can see, we can make a, a vast, we can make the office wear, and also we can use, uh, make some of uh, the kitchen wares. So that's it for the daily use. Uh, and some of them are pretty close to look at the rocket. And it's, it's not a, uh, because we have a in the, uh, actually a lacking of materials. We just want to make this one as quick as possible so use the cost uh, setting. And actually we can make a very refined uh, the samples. And uh, so like this was a pretty good with a very complex shape and uh, very um, impressive. Um, and uh, what's the next uh, step we do? So that's what we are currently doing for the composite, reinforced by the natural fiber. 
and we do the printing. And uh, this is the whole process, the new process for the uh, new project. So after the first uh, phase one project, we are pretty much uh, uh, skilled, experienced uh, team. So now we work on this with this uh, uh, process. So that's the current. And for the future work, it's also part of the future work. We want to empower the community and to use such technology. For example, we use the one container, uh, put uh, uh, 3D printers there, and uh, people could recycle the material directly and get the product like what they would like to have. So this one can be printed easily. So that's the, what uh, we want to do next step. So last year we did uh, attend uh, uh, the Cyrus uh, EPIN uh, network uh, uh, acceleration and the incubator programs to develop this idea further. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, I would like to show the gratitude, uh, gratitude and acknowledge the funding support from the Commonwealth Scientific and the Industrial Research Organization. Uh, CERO Australia on both uh, CERO and the uh, NSF Convergence Accelerator Program, I mean Phase 1 and Phase 2. So this project started with a small project one year, but now it's ended in Phase 2 for three years. So that's in total, we use four years to work on this important problem. And we also would like to show the um, gratitude to the collaborations and the tech teamwork from all partners with 3D uh, University Tech Access. And also uh, we have a new collaborator in phase two, George Tech, and uh, Habitat for Humanity Resort and from USA, and also you have the University of Wollonga. And uh, of course the CERO and the NSF support me and uh, greatly support us. and. Uh, and also we attend, I mentioned the EPIN, so Indoor Pacific Plastic Innovation uh, Network. But last year we did an incubator and accelerator program and where they uh, win them up. And uh, last but not the least, I uh, um, would like to acknowledge the service team from the RIS3D and also technical research uh, support from the TRTS from Western Sydney. So, that's pretty much the end of my talk. Thank you so much and uh, welcome all the questions from our team. My question is uh, uh, about the procedures that we make uh, uh, material. It made it hard. Yeah. Like we have Forge, we have uh, Outflow, uh, all of this method. But in additive uh, method, uh, just to use uh, adding the particles or the metal method on that. Oh. So uh, I'm asking about the uh, coherence and also the strengths and uh, you know some some uh, characteristics of the material. Yeah. Because the method is completely different. That's correct. Yeah. And thank you for that. That's a very good question because uh, in the uh, additive manufacturing you see uh, and uh, normally the process is just uh, naturally dropped the materials. So it doesn't like uh, forging or stamping or metal forming in the, uh, the traditional metal uh, works. So those processes really put a lot of force, right? So over the whole process and starting from maybe casting and then you do the folding process. It's a very complex process. And they make the materials uh, with a very, very full structure, we could say. And for additive manufacturing, because we don't apply, normally we don't apply actual force on top. And that is the inevitably we generate those voids, the gaps. So you can see the uh, photos and pictures I showed. So the gap, air gap, and between the contours and the infill. And also the voice, natural voice, because if you said uh, the infill percentage is low, 40%, 80%, less than 100% in the gap between the infills, they do have uh, their patterns. So that's the other uh, things. Uh, um, it looks like it's a defect. It's not defect, actually. It's the advantage because for the materials, and usually 
we over design the material, over use the material. But the additive manufacturing is the opposite. We try to use the less material to accommodate uh, the strength capacity or uh, strength requirement. So those part is really focused on the sustainability. So it doesn't mean these materials lower than the traditionally made materials, manufacturing materials, because we could use the lighter uh, materials, uh, lighter structures, and to replace those materials. So to some instance, the stress white, it may be not comparative. So additively manufactured material is lower than conventionally manufactured materials. That's possible. But the outcomes is not a focus on this. Is really we still can generate the material comparable with the needs, not the over design. So that's what is a benefit for use the uh, additive manufacturing. So they are not that strong as the conventional methods. For some cases, it's not, but for some cases, they are equal. So, uh, uh, we had made developments in how we can make them more yes. solid or. Yes, that's a lot of post processing. And for example, for metal 3D printing, we do have some heat treatment, and then we do have some, uh, we term as a heat technology, it's a high uh, impress, uh, pressure technology. So that's a heat technology. So actually apply the high pressure to make it, those voices smaller. And uh, still have a lot of innovative technologies, including what we do here to just work. So we also try to make it, uh, the materials can be uh, solid. Yeah, that can be improved significantly. So a lot of work people still doing, and you can see the, uh, the rapid advances uh, in this uh, area. So all the new technologies, it's just coming out. Yeah. The good thing is, ITO manufacturing is so simple, so easy to do. Compared to conventional, you have the whole Hack whole process, and you need all the skills knowledge at each state. But for additive manufacturing, it's really simple. So that's why it's sustainable, economical. I hope I answer your question. Uh, you. It's it keep a lot of unknowns there. Uh, but the the point is uh, the the thing that we create the mm. uh, last for large yeah useful for example in the industry because. For metals, uh, we don't have the domestic usage. We have industry usage. Yeah. Uh, so the last production should be used for the practical in the industry. So when they are not that strong, you know, the strong so maybe uh, still they need to be improved. Yeah. So so this uh, I don't mean to uh, uh, misunderstand me. And uh, it's a comparative. It's still comparative. Uh, comparable to the traditional manufactured materials. And uh, for 3D printing, it's, uh, for metal, especially when you talk about it, more about the metal. It's now is used the aircraft. It's used in the rocket, uh, in the, uh, those uh, the high technology uh, areas. So that's no problem, without any problem. Because you just put more effort to make the material better, better. It's uh, for even for what we have here for the two uh, metal printers, we obtain the materials. It, it's just a slightly lower than the traditional manufactured materials. So it's not a really it's comparable, but not a really higher than that. But a little bit slightly lower, but it's same, almost the same. For example, of uh, stainless steel, we. Lawrence put a comment on that, right? Last time we we did a uh, yeah, um, we did a seventy four pH. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then like, well, I mean, it depends on the particularly of uh, the heat treatment of the woods. Yeah, so, like at worst, for last time they used to have like same white heat percent, mm. low on I mean ninety percent of uh, yes. So that's a ninety percent. So that's what we can achieve. Yeah. Yeah. It's good enough anyway. Yeah. And and for additively 
manufacturing the materials, you can set how much materials I put in field percentage. I increase the percentage level when I go to for much stronger materials. And for traditionally manufacturing material, we do the material selections, right? But basically, in some cases, you have no choice. You have to choose a stronger material in some locations, but that requires lower strength. But you still need to use that materials because considering, for example, anti-corrosion and the other scenarios. So this is no choice. But for 3D printing, you have choice. You can make much lighter structures. That's why it's so popular. All right, thank you. That's a good question. Any other questions? Yeah. There are a couple of questions uh, online. Yeah. And uh, I think this is based on your discussion. Jeffrey is commenting that approximately 80% strength. Yeah. Pro probably, yeah, 80, 90, we can achieve. Yeah. Okay. It's depending on the post processing. Yes. Okay. The question, first question is at this point, how likely do you think it will be to reach the goal of 80% reusing plastics by 2030? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, we try our best uh, anyway. We want to provide a solution. So using this uh, FGF uh, uh, 3D printing, I hope we can attract uh, um, the industrial partners to join us and invest the money to make a uh, a uh, factory or uh, company and to do this work. And to reach 80% uh, in 2030, only six years to go. And it's not uh, only from our research team can do, but I hope uh, it's, it will be the systematic uh, team effort from government, from community, from industry, from researcher, and uh, all together, we may be able to achieve that 80%. But remember, currently only 14%. And that's a, a big gap. We have a 66% left. <laughs> um, it's a big job, I could say. I have a confidence, uh, but uh, I, know, I also know how. But I hope the government really take some actions to push the process. Thank you. That's a good question. Thank you. And another question is, have you, uh, from, this is from Jeffrey. Yep. Have you experimented with and tested any temperature annealing of RPLA or other recycled plastics with FDF printed items? Yes, we did. We did have uh, some and uh, we finished the testing, uh, but we didn't publish the result yet. It's uh, including uh, included into your uh, uh, report. Probably, uh, uh, Jeffrey, please uh, pay attention. Uh, to our future publication very soon. Yeah, we finish off all the uh, research and did uh, DSC, TIR, all this testing. Look into all these uh, um, the uh, the because the PLA is quite different from other polymers. It's a um, it's a crystal uh, crystallized. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. And in te uh, temperature, we look into all the temperature. A lot of thank yous for sharing a really good presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the encouragement and the support. Thank you so much for supporting today our library. I'd like to thank you for presenting today. We had lots of people online as well. So a really good session. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your coming. Thank you. Thank you.